Hi there. So we're, um, we're just going to dive right in in the interest of time. Um, my name is Perry Evans. I'm just here to introduce these guys. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I've been around the startup space for as long as it looks. Um, so um, that explains the flat forehead and the gray hair. Um, so I've done four startups in, the, in and around the local and messaging technology space. So, uh, so I, I feel the pain and, and the, uh, the euphoria that goes with, uh, with these guys. It's a, it's a great crowd. There are five startups who are each going to give you a flavor for their company and their product and their business model. Um, I would say that all of them in some form or another are looking for combinations of partnership opportunities for um, expanding the reach of what they're building. Um, money is always, uh, as they say, always be fundraising. Um, so I'm sure every one of them would entertain uh, discussions from strategic or angel investors. Um, most everybody in the group is in the range of uh, early stage to um, seed to early series A. So every, everything is uh, somewhere between MVP and, and just starting to scale the business to give you a sense of, of range. And sort of true to local, um, there's a diverse component or collection of businesses here ranging from infrastructure plays to consumer to um, SMB advertising and, and marketing models. Um, so I think you'll find it uh, a good sort of reflection on the space. So I'm going to turn it over to, uh, to the first, uh, Philippe Doman of uh, Trey. So enjoy. Let's see if this works. Um, hi, yeah, I'm Philippe Doman. Um, I'm the business co founder of Trey. Um, there's a lot. It's a uh, Use Trey.com, by the way, and I'm at P. Demont on Twitter. Um, so there's a lot of local startups that are uh, making it easier for brick and mortar local businesses to connect to and find consumers, bring them into their stores, um, and interact with them. Um, but it's actually creating uh, even more challenges in some ways if you're actually running a brick and mortar business competing with online. So our startup is really about uh, solving, bringing technology into the operations of physical businesses. Um, we are a self-service food and beverage ordering company, that's our focus, um, and we're really trying to solve a problem that in a way has been created by this Uber generation where consumers' uh, expectations, they have a whole new set of them um, for instant ordering uh, through an app. Um, automatic progress uh, updates um, that aren't really compatible always with the traditional uh, way brick and mortars operate. Um, meanwhile, on the enterprise side, uh, certainly uh, profit margins are razor thin when you're competing with online options and you have food delivery services now that are super convenient. Um, you know, it, it's sometimes hard out there for a business to operate. So we, we think self-service ordering uh, this slide used to say is the future. I think it's here. Um, you've probably seen in airports, there's some kiosks. McDonald's just rolled out um, self-serve ordering kiosks. Um, but there's no real turnkey solution. McDonald's actually built their own. And so what we built is, we think, the only turnkey solution that's enterprise class um, and solely focused on self-serve. There's lots of point-of-sale systems that are not really self-serve focused. Um, and the few that are don't really have kind of the security and convenience that um, we think is really required and that we deliver. So just a quick summary of the type of systems we have, make it a little more concrete. Um, we, of course, have a user app um, for iOS and Android. I think that's really the future state, that you go in a restaurant um, and you don't have um, kind of the plastic laminate menus you see in higher volume places, but you have an, your own app. Um, instant browsing service, video. Um, of course, kiosks in any form factor, um, staff handheld tablets, anything you could want. Um, it's all Android based except for the iOS app. So that gives us very low cost, flexibility. You know, try doing a 56, excuse me, 56 inch screen kiosk with uh, you know, an iPad, can't do it. Um, so really, we come to businesses and we're not pushing one solution, but a brand manager, um, or just a business owner um, can describe what they want and we can generally find Android hardware that's capable and configure our system to um, 
help them incorporate self-serve into their existing operation. Um, oh, I'm, there we go. Um, so we've done some innovations too. This is just one example since I'm low on time. Uh, we call it a smart printer, uh, but it's based on observing how self-serve works in the real world where you don't have um, a staff member telling the kitchen when to start the order. So this does things like beeps to alert staff to start the order. It can update the consumer live on order progress. Um, and of course, what's nice about it is you don't even need a whole point of sale system. You can just drop one of these. It's got an integrated screen, so this is really all you need to get up and running. You have this in your establishment. It's about $500, and then you're good to go with our app. You're accepting orders. Um, we also scale all the way up to enterprise-grade systems. Um, so the types of businesses that use us, we started with um, smaller local businesses, which have seen, I'll give you a couple examples before I get off the stage. Um, but we actually just signed a couple of enterprise partnerships that I actually can't announce yet, but we're rolling them out over the next couple of months. It's because we've built our system to be scalable and enterprise class. Um, so we think, you know, anything that's higher touch, sorry, lower touch, high volume businesses like quick serve restaurants, hotels, uh, enterprise food service, like corporate cafeterias, et cetera, can really benefit from this. So I'll give a cu couple quick examples before I go. Um, again, I can't talk about the kind of large enterprises yet, but Wild Island is a water park in Nevada, and they have these uh, 18 VIP cabanas, but it wasn't really effective. They were struggling. How do they hire enough full-time staff to bring food out to them and really monitor these guests? Um, so really before Trey, they would have to wait on long lines at food stations in the park um, so now they have one of these in each of the 18 cabanas. Um, of course, when you make it convenient to order, customers will order more. Um, so the revenues went up 10% due to higher orders. They obviously didn't have to hire more staff. Um, and in fact, the, they're marketing it as a VIP perk that you no longer have to wait in line or even look for a staff member. You can just order all you want. Um, so I had one more example that I don't have time for. Um, but basically, we are, again, rolling out um, to some larger enterprise um, companies by the end of this year. We're always looking for customers and partners um, and actually to support, um, for instance, this large hotel chain we're rolling out in. Uh, we are uh, raising a small round right now as well, if anyone has any leads or contacts. Thanks. Good afternoon. Hi, I'm Carl. Carl from Building Footprint USA, down the road from Albany, New York, sort of token non-New York City company. So today I'd like to spend a few minutes talking to companies that care about location, location analysis, spatial analysis, demographic analysis as a part of your hyperlocal solution or, or business problem. If you care about location, you probably care about people or groups of people or populations and who they are and what they care about. You care about locations, what draws people to locations, what attracts people to locations, what's interesting at locations. And if you're a business that's really making a big location bet, right now you have two options. Uh, the first option is really epitomized by the companies you saw before lunch. Place IQ, Placed, Foursquare. These are companies that made big million, maybe $10 million bets on creating data and tools that were unique and compelling and differentiating for their business problem. Great for them. The other option that you have is to cobble together a set of off-the-shelf data and tools to meet your needs to meet the needs of the existing customer or maybe a, a professional services project. This is kind of the, the arts and crafts of, of spatial analysis. And we built building, we really created Building Footprint USA to give you a third option, to give you an option for an off-the-shelf, nationwide, affordable location solution that you could plug into any hyperlocal problem. You know, at Building Footprint USA, we 
we're, uh, we're location junkies, I'll be honest there. And, and we have a belief that if people work, play, live, sleep, and shop in buildings, why not actually do all your location modeling using buildings? There are 100 million buildings in the United States, and our goal is to give you, if you care about location, insight on what's going on in every single one. Buildings are rich, building footprints, building polygons, building centric analysis. And if you have these really accurate buildings to use for analysis, what we can do at Building Footprint USA is start to layer on additional information to support your location problem. We can lay our, layer on the most accurate and rich address information, whether it's a 40-story office tower or a six-building apartment complex or a single-family home or a two-family two flat. We layer on address information. And that's interesting for a lot of local problems, but it's also a means to an end for the next thing we can do. We can offer up a whole menu of interesting, relevant, demographic, and other uh, attribution that you can pick from. You take a look at your hyper-local business problem and you just pick from the menu different variables, different data packs to combine with polygons to solve your location problem. You know, if you, if you want to know more about people, you've traced them to their homes where they live, their buildings where they reside, uh, and you want to find out about their ethnicity, their household income, their educational attainment. We can provide information that describes that. If you want to know what people care about, you know where people live, now you want to know how they, how they play, what they value, what they purchase. We can draw off the menu, pull data off the menu, and give you, to that as, give you that data as well. If you care about what's at locations, point of interest, business list data, we can provide that information to you as well. All easily customizable for your hyperlocal business problem. You know, we, at Building Footprint USA, We've just given you a taste of, of our solution. You know, we really are focused on accuracy, the highest accuracy possible for your location problem, addressed information, enrichable with a whole menu of different data to support your hyperlocal problem, nationwide, and most importantly, affordable, that you can easily grab and drop into your location problem. One of the most exciting things is, is location and data junkies. One of the most exciting things that conversations that we have with people. We, we know the problems this data will solve, but when people come up to us and say, hey, I have a business problem. I, I see you can solve problems A, B, and C. Can you solve D? Can you solve E? Can you solve F? And we can work with you to pull together a collection of content that very specifically solves your hyper-local business problem. Those are the fun conversations we like to have. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Jason. Um, in my prior life, I started an e-commerce company uh, that has about 80 employees. We're a private, profitable company, and I'm about to share with you my new passion project, which is Fave It, which is, um, as you can see, all about saving and sharing your favorite places and things. So on the way over here this morning, I passed by a uh, sushi spot. It looked like a great spot, but it was in the morning. So uh, I knew that I would never, I'm not in this part of town, I'd never remember where it was, so I just faved that. Uh, I was just uh, over um, where the, uh, the um, presenters are and got a business card. I'm not going to keep that. I just faved that for later as well. Somebody earlier uh, at a meeting uh, mentioned a book that I should read, and I just faved that as well. So that's basically what fave it is. Why would you use Fave It? Again, it's to remember important things for, for later or to share them. Uh, it's all built upon what I call the circle of trust. Uh, when it comes to recommendations, you trust yourself, you trust your friends, and then there's this whole influencer component, and then on top of it, it sits on Google Places. So how do I create a Fave It? It's pretty simple here. Uh, a friend of mine was mentioning this movie, Keanu. I just type it in. Uh, it actually suggests um, favorite names, and I just select one, and then based upon that, it will pull up search results, basically URLs, and then I just tap whichever URL I want to save. So a favorite comprises of a name, 
I can add a description or pre-populate it from Google. I can add my own image or it will pre-populate it as well. I can give it a, a location or if I'm selecting a spot, it will already have the location uh, associated with it. And then of course I can categorize it, put a phone number up as well. So this is just in a nutshell what it looks like. Uh, there's the me screen where you have your chronological order of favorites that you can categorize. There's also a friend component to it where you can see all your friends' favorites. Um, Moving along, there's also a uh, desktop extension, so articles, videos, whatever you might uh, want to remember for later um, or share, you can, uh, you can fave. Then uh, there's a desktop version as well. So those are all my custom categories on the left, and these are just movies that uh, either I've seen in a billboard, watched a commercial, a friend has recommended instead of me on a Friday night, uh, trying to parse through Netflix and see what random people may recommend, I reference this. Uh, there's a lot of exposure possibilities for brands uh, where they can have their own channel and, and curate their own content in different types of lists. And all the content is, if it's geo-based, all the content will show up in the proximal to wherever you happen to be. So it's closest to, to, to where you are. Uh, don't have a ton of time, but you, there are a, a lot of different opportunities for brands and influencers, as you can see here, with kind of creating that type of community um, and those additional touch points in a, in, a, uh, in a new and unique way. And then uh, this is just an influencer part. Uh, where this is just an individual, has this whole friending component uh, where you can see the categories and you can reference it, again, all related to wherever you happen to be, all in kind of geo order. And there's the map view there. The discovery component of it uh, is, is pretty essential to, to the application. You can curate your own content, you can have brands that curate it, so these are kind of support for publishers. You can even crowdsource certain lists and do different campaigns like that. These are just different ideas and uh, the type of content that we have. And uh, we also do private favorites, so you can share uh, whatever it might be. I always forget my freaking flyer numbers, I always forget my record locator, so I can save those on favorite. Um, mark them as private, and then you have the ability to share it just with your select friends. And then we also use it uh, for business. So my company, Akadaka, we have all the um, just key kind of thought leaders in the organization. As they're doing their reading, they're faving stuff, categorizing it, and they can share it with the others. And this is me. And this is what I'm looking for. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Wow, what a great crowd. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, give yourselves a round of applause. So my name is Dave Kirpin. I'm the CEO and founder of Likeable Local, the first social automation software for small businesses. A little bit about me and my team, um, interesting background, started off while in college as a ballpark vendor, fell in love with sales and marketing while creating uh, a name for myself as the Crunch and Munch guy in Boston. Then I got married at a baseball game and raised $100,000 for a sponsored wedding. Our vendors got so much press that they said, this is awesome, what are you guys gonna do next? And we couldn't get married again, so we started a company. Our first company, Likeable Media, works with the biggest brands in the world in social media management. And while that company has been super successful, we had lots and lots of small businesses come to us and say, what about us? We want social media help. And the economics just don't work. You, an agency can't help a small business with social media marketing effectively. So three years ago, we took everything we learned about social media marketing for big brands and that I had written about in my books, and we applied it to a SaaS platform for small businesses. I mentioned a little bit about me. I also happen to be the beneficiary of writing for LinkedIn uh, with over 20 million page views and, and a bunch of books. Um, my COO has experienced scaling sales teams twice, Mark Brooks, he's here today. 
And my CTO, Hugh Morgan Besser, um, is a terrific developer, and he leads our uh, development team up in um, Portland, Maine, which we call Silicon Lobster. Um, among other things, he wrote the, the first speech recognition software, which is actually now in Siri, which is pretty cool. So as you all know, small businesses really struggle with social media. It's a huge, huge problem. They simply don't have the time, money, skills, or resources to do it. We saw this morning in the data that it's the number one thing that small businesses need help with. And so our solution solves that problem, basically taking all of their pain points around social media, listening, content, advertising, lead gen, and doing it all for them in our marketing platform. So instead of spending hours and hours and hours or thousands of dollars on an agency, they're spending less than an hour a week and they're only spending between $300 and $1,000 a month. And it's working really well. We have about 1,200 paying customers and about 10,000 users and a $3 million run rate. We're near profitability um, and we're growing really quickly. We focus on the addressable market within the 27 million small businesses where they have, a highest, they have the highest lifetime value for their customers. So dentists, doctors, jewelers, other high-end retail, um, those are all examples of verticals that we've found great success in. We share content and stories, we help them generate leads, we help manage their reputation, um, we help with reach through our proprietary turbo post, more about that in a minute, um, and ultimately we save them time and resources. Don't have time for a demo, but um, we publish content to four platforms, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Our latest product iteration is offer pages, so we, we created a really easy, beautiful way to create offers in landing pages, and then our platform and social media and advertising drives traffic to those offer pages in order to generate leads for our customers. We have a fully functioning iPhone app um, so that our small business customers and, and our partners can manage everything on the go. I mentioned TurboPost ad technology. So one of the big problems with social media is coming up with content. Small businesses work really, really hard to come up with content. They finally get content, and then they put it out there. They finally get content because Facebook requires you, basically, to advertise in order to get your content seen. A really cool aspect of our product is it takes every single post that goes through our platform, whether it's our posts, or our own content, or the SMB's content, and turns it into an ad targeting the right people in the zip code that the small business gives us. And because of that advertising, we've seen really great uh, impact compared to uh, a lot of the other social media tools on the market. Um, don't have time for this, but really cool uh, kind of story. Um, where we fit in, you know, we really consider ourselves the sprinkler for SMBs in this really large $135 billion market. These are some of the, the categories that we target, really everything literally from auto to wedding, from beauty to veterinarians. And I'll close with a quote from uh, a friend and mentor, Seth Godin, how dare you settle for less when the world makes it so easy to be remarkable. It's not that hard to be remarkable in social media, and with the help of awesome, awesome partners like you, we're gonna help thousands and thousands of small businesses be remarkable, and we're gonna make lots of money together. Thank you. Whether it's rental cars or taxis, we've all seen what technology can do to personal mobility or how individuals move around. But how will groups of people move in the sharing economy? What will high occupancy vehicles, buses, vans, look like in the future of mobility? Hi everyone, my name's Numan, founder of Rally in crowd-powered mobility. And we've answered these questions with 500,000 rides reserved and I'm here to show you how. You see, it all started with a grassroots rally. We wanted to help a lot of people get together, but we didn't know where they were coming from or what time they wanted to get there. And we certainly weren't gonna book buses in hope. So we turned to the wisdom of the crowds and created an app that let people self-organize rides, but required a minimum number of people to sign up to kickstart each trip. And it went viral. In a single day, we moved 5,000 people to Washington, D.C. They came from 50 different cities across 20 states, 
and on 96 buses full of like-minded people. Since then, we've applied this concept to events of all kinds. Just search for bus to most any team, venue, concert, or festival, and you'll find Rally on top of organic search results. Going to the Giants game? Check out our pop-up mass transit network around the venue. Each of these pins represents a rally point or a potential bus stop. Find one near you or add your own. They're color-coded to represent routes, and they're dynamic to create productive trips. Book a seat and spread the word. Rally confirms trips anywhere there's enough demand. On the day of, track the bus on its way over to you. Check yourself in and hop on board. Enjoy the Wi-Fi and the streaming content. Have a drink. And rest assured knowing there's a bathroom on board. And why do we rally? Because travel is better together. You see, we figured out early the power of community and what it could be. Traffic, parking, zero tolerance policies, bad weather, accidents, all the issues of peak travel. Rally's platform addresses these challenges here and now. And while communities everywhere are looking for this, we work with premier partners that let their event goers know about Rally. You see, they know if they make it easy and more experiential to get to their event, more people will come. Our latest partnership with Major League Baseball has us integrated directly into the checkout process. So for the 2017 season, every time you buy a game ticket, you'll get the option to rally. It's partners like these and our on-demand platform that have let us scale quickly. Riders have created 3,000 local rally points and are adding more every day. Here's an example of a community that rallied. The Mets fan club, the Seven Line Army, wanted to create a camping trip, and they used our platform to do so. Without any promotion of our, from us, they sold $60,000 worth of seats in 60 minutes. How would they have done this on their own? How would they have organized the trips and coordinated the communication? Rally's technology moved 700 people more efficiently than has ever been done before. And we're applying our crowd power algorithms to commuting as well. Next year, we'll do 200,000 passenger trips in and out of Manhattan alone. So we've talked about the demand side. Where are all these buses coming from? You know the biggest bus company you can think of, Greyhound? They only own 3% of the inventory. There's actually 4,000 local mom and pop shops out there that own these buses, and they're collectively doing 700 million passenger trips a year in the US and Canada alone. And there's tens of thousands of events happening every single day. Rally matches the supply and demand to create a network effect around communities and buses. 94% of those bus companies, they own fewer than 25 buses each, and they're sitting around idle half the time. If this sounds familiar, yeah, this is what black cars used to look like. And just like them, this represents a $100 billion sector. Rally has unified this industry with a digital-first international brand in busing. Even before the term was coined, buses were an inherent part of the sharing economy. And they're an integral part of the future of mobility. Rally is changing the way communities mobilize and has created an experiential marketing platform while doing so. So tweet out this promo code and come rally with us. Thank you. So I think we're about at the end here. Um, what I'd do is encourage anybody, um, all of these five founders are going to be around the conference for the next little while, so uh, make a point of reaching out if you have specific interest. Um, also, for convenience, I did a, um, if you go to twitter.com slash perryevans slash lists, um, there's a list in there of these startups, so if you want to follow along and just keep track of what they're doing, um, you can just add that list or select um, any of them. So um, you can use that as a way to uh, follow along and see how they progress over the next year or two. 
um, but by all means uh, reach out individually and uh, uh, encourage them, um, give them money, give them partnerships, make them, make them happy. All right, thank you very much.